Welcome to Rick Scale Model Fix and another kit review. This time I'm privileged and honoured to be able to bring to you a look inside a white box or a pre-production release of Tamiya's hugely anticipated F4B Phantom 2. I must extend my gratitude and thanks to Scale Aircraft Modelling Magazine for which a full build article will appear in a future issue and also the Hobby Company Limited for supplying the review kit. White box Tamiya kits are pre-release, so they're not uh, destined for the public market. They contain none of the literature associated with the full-blown release, such as decals, information and paint guides, and finalised instruction booklet. So the instruction booklet in this kit is just a photocopy of what I assume is intended to go in the initial release. However, I'm assuming that by this stage the plastic parts will be what is in that kit. The kit's due for release in summer 2021. So without further ado, let's take a look at what all the hype on the internet's been about and lift the lid. So we're going to take a look at the instruction book first. So please bear in mind that this is a low quality photocopy of what the original or the intended release is going to look like. So I'm assuming that that's a, uh, a box top artwork replication there at the top. And we've got the usual blurb, paint conversion charts and modelling tools that are required to build the kit. Turning the page and at the top there we've got some handy tips about labelling up your sprues. We've got parts that aren't included so straight away we've got some suggestion that there may be other versions of this kit to follow. And we've got three schemes included in the kit. So we've got an aircraft from VF-51 Screaming Eagles, VF-111 Sundowners and VF-161 Chargers. Looking at the assembly sequence in stage one, it's asking that we paint the inside of the fuselage and open some holes and add some sidewall detail. And then we have to decide straight away whether we want the in-flight refueling probe extended or retracted. And there's different setup of parts to enable you to recreate that. And then again, some drop in panels. So, this is again indi indicating that there will be other examples of the kit that may feature a different panel layout there intended in the future. Page three, and the fuselage is broken down into a quite complex looking arrangement so it's got the nose section removed from the main fuselage so again I would anticipate that that's to allow for that in-flight refueling probe and a US Air Force version that had a spine mounted in-flight refueling receptacle so the noses would be different and indeed there's a separate panel looking there to go onto the spine so again indicating that there may be a C or a D in the offing Separate panels again, hopefully these will fit without fuss, it is Tamiya after all. And just to point out that there are some decal placement guides there as well, which probably won't be reflected on the main painting guide later on. Unfortunately that's not supplied in the kit, so we'll have to wait until the kit's released to check that. Diving straight in section 4, and we've got what looks to be a complex cockpit tub arrangement. Brilliant colour card out showing what everything should be painted, and it does look very very interesting and uh, for anyone that's built the Tomcat the Tomcat looks as though it's broken down in a similar manner to the the Phantom or vice versa if that should be. Turning the page features more work on the cockpit and this time bulkheads, sidewall detail coming together and more consoles which are nicely supplied as separate items which makes painting a lot easier. Traditional breakdown for a Phantom we're looking at the nose gear bay and the floor and the roof of that which makes up looking as though it makes up the cockpit as well so that's all coming together in part in stage 11 and again this looks quite detailed nice little inclusion there is, is a socket for the nose gear which I would assume means that the nose gear leg can be inserted after it's been built which uh, is always a nice touch saves uh, snapping it off part way through the build cockpit tub finalizing in part 12 and again another indication of perhaps other versions separate radar screens and uh, dials and bezels 
onto the engines these look to be highly detailed with many separate parts as we'll see as we turn over the page so we've got construction of basically the rear end jet nozzles and they're being cemented into the rear fuselage indeed there's that center spine going in which covers that gap in the fuselage and again I would imagine that this is going to be a different uh, arrangement for an Air Force version. Pay attention in section 16 as there's a lot going on there and it's going to be very easy to miss things so we've got some holes to drill out and some bits to cut off again indicating at further examples. So this kit is becoming a very modular and complex beast at the moment let's just hope everything goes together well and lives up to uh, Tamiya's reputation of a quality fit. Looking at main spare for the wing we've got some nice detail there with the wheel wells coming together and the wings going on top so we have got bulges there for the wing top wing tops which are a separate piece. Wing to fuselage pretty straightforward quite traditional approach to the Phantom and then we're looking at the attaching the belly plate or the nose under plate and again it's calling out to fill in some recesses so I, again further hints that Tamiya intend to produce other versions of this aircraft onto the intakes always a sort of Achilles heel point of any Phantom so it'll be interesting to see how uh, the King of Kits has tackled this, it's quite well detailed there for some of the intakes and splitter plates and it's got all the recessed rivet detail on the splitter plate there. We haven't got full length intakes, um, we've got a, representing, a representation of such but you'll not be able to tell the difference when you look down the model. That's repeated for the left or the port side and these are then joined on to the fuselage so we may actually have stand corrected full length intakes there looking at that horizontal stabilizer nice to again drop in panels suggesting later marks or earlier versions of the kit now we've got the slotted type just looking at that Stabiliser mount, it's calling stage 25, so we've got other bits and pieces going in there to enable the stabs to go in. That's then trapped on the rear end of the fuselage. Other plates going in, the rest are hook. And then it's onto these in engines. Uh, they look very complex, made up of separate parts. Uh, maybe to, uh, again, incorporate the shorter or longer petalled exhausts of the different versions. Main landing gear bay doors made up of inner and outer sections so it'll be interesting to see how they've done that in regards to ejector pins maybe they're all on the inside fingers crossed smaller lumps and bumps going on in stage 29 and then a focus of attention goes to the nose gear bay and the landing gear doors 31 deals with the nose landing gear so yes the socket and receptacle for the uh, nose gear leg that was previously installed way back at the beginning of the instructions is there so nice touch Tamiya saves any breakage to that part looks well detailed with stencil data supplied for the undercarriage legs nose gear door and then it's onto the radome so just follow the ear examples of which one you're building as the uh, under chin pod is slightly different so again I'm going to have to watch that build when I build mine as I'm going to use after I'm going to have to use aftermarket decals so I'm going to have to make sure that I get the right version for the kit. Main landing gear legs it doesn't like look like we've got any options for late or early wheels. I don't know if they're applicable to this marker Phantom. Auxiliary air outlets for the underneath which is fully loaded with detail looking at that faint diagram and the undercarriage legs going on. Turning the page and we've got work being carried out on the wings and it's nice to see that you can have the wingtips folded or extended, flaps retracted or deployed 
and wing speed brakes deployed or retracted again. Going down into stage 37 and it's showing that the extended wingtip assembly procedure or the folded wingtip extended procedure flaps made up from multi parts with hinges, different hinges for down or up. Fitting the previous wingtip sections to the model and the flaps and the speed brakes are pretty much standard there. As you can see the build is quite long and detailed so we're up to stage 42 which is wing speed brakes in the closed position and the open position again and then it's onto the pylons. So we've got various pylons and adapters there. Again, pretty standard for a Phantom. Sparrows, sidewinders, and that's all that's included in the kit and their location on the airframe. Turning the page we've got drop tank and the for the centre line and the options associated with that. So we've got outer wing pylons and all the decal placements. So it looks like there's going to be a massive amount of stencil data. In fact, these are labelled up to 281. Outer wing drop tanks, they're going in place, and then it's onto the vertical tail. Again, different parts for the leading edge. So, like I said, we just hope everything goes together, otherwise, this is going to be a mass of seams. Interesting to note that we've only got the later version of the tail with the uh, radar warning receivers incorporated in it and no earlier rounded one. Ejector seats at the end of the build, these look well detailed. Pilot figures with decals provided for the helmets etc. Pilots and final stages of the ejector seats coming together there and a bit more cockpit assembly, canopy rails and combing which look exquisitely detailed. Again you're going to get canopy masks, um, assuming they're going to have to be cut as usual with Tamiya. Inner framework for the open canopy, all looking very nice. Quite a lot of detail there, it's going to look really good. Closed canopy with the turtle decking and the rear seam, that extended Refueling probe if you chose that way back in stage one. Crew boarding ladder. And that's it. So it looks to be a very, very comprehensive build. A really well detailed kit. So let's take a look at the plastic. We're going to take a look at the clay parts first, just because they were on top. And a very weird looking sprue. Now we have the canopy and surrounding framework which seems to be the normal standard practice these days for Tamiya they certainly did that in their Tomcat we've got front and rear opening sections and the centre bridge piece all crystal clear and perfectly formed we also have another clear sprue which has got the heads up display and some of the lights and lenses and also a single piece moulding of the opening, open and canopy sections. It's nice to see as well that they've took the trouble on both sprues to, to like put a protection bar in there so we don't get it squashed or scraped. The sprues are coming out the box in no particular order so this is sprue N and it's got some pylons on there, main gear legs, pylons, adapter rails and that spine. So this is the navy version as it hasn't got the in-flight refueling receptacle on the upper surface there. Details to be expected, very finely engraved panel lines and some rivet detail. I've also got some side consoles there for the cockpit which will hopefully look good painted up. Interesting arrangement of having those intakes on the edge of the sprue. Maybe, just maybe, we're going to see an RAF or an English version from this kit at some point as it would be quite easy to mould the intakes and fuselage separately to accommodate that. Who knows, maybe it's just wishful thinking. Looking at this, it's sprue C and we've got the intake splitter plates which are absolutely lovely and contain 
all that surface detail that you'd expect to find there. Cockpit tub and bulkheads, pilot figure arms and canopy sills, bulkhead and the floor or the roof for the nose gear leg. Cockpit tub is devoid of any detail, obviously being inserted from separate parts throughout the build. There's two sprue Zs contained in the kit and these are home to the sparrows and sidewinder missiles to put on the underwing pylons. Sprue A and this contains that large centerline fuel tank, some of the undercarriage parts, pylons and a lot of internal structure. It looks like we've got a rudder there and flaps maybe and that auxiliary intake doors which is bay underneath which is absolutely crammed with detail there. That'll look good with paint, careful painting and a wash. So here's the evidence that the kit is incredibly modular. So we have a full size port fuselage with some drop in panels and gaps for the tailplane pivot points and everything and then this bizarre configuration of a separate nose and rear fuselage. Let's just hope that join is perfect and there we've got uh, the in-flight refueling panel which makes the difference between this the Navy version and the US Air Force version hence why they've probably broke that down. So here we have the stabilizers in one piece which was always a weak point in any Phantom that I've built up to this point so it's nice to see some good hinges there and these are the slotted type and then we've got the associated fuselage work to accommodate those we've got the bracketry, I'm assuming that's for the wing fold and wings extended some intakes, not a sign of an ejector pin thankfully and doors for the underside we have got a few ejector pins on the inside mating surfaces of these parts that are going to need cleaning up. They are very, very faint, but they are proud. So just check your fit there while you're constructing the model. This is really just the kit that keeps on giving. Um, there's plenty of more plastic yet. So we've got the wings and under chin pods there, two separate types, undercarriage doors etc. So very very flimsy construction. The blind side full of ejector pins but nothing visible on top of the gear the main gear ceiling or the roof. We've got some ejector pin marks very very faintly inside the speed brake detail there. Again, Tamiya should be doing better than that. So looking at the lower surface of the wing, the flaps on the inboard side are moulded shut. We've got some lovely recessed detail with rivets, double row of rivets in, in fact there. They're really quite nice. More plastic, more double sprues. This one uh, contains the engines. So we've got all that engine detail with the exhaust petals. We've got one type of wheel provided. We've got the ejector seat cushions and uh, fuel tanks, underwing fuel tanks, seat framework, etc. And the outer wing panels, which are moulded as one, one piece. And the recesses for the blades that we saw in the previous sprue to either hold those extended or deployed, uh, folded or deployed. Two remaining sprues in the kit and we have the vertical tail and cockpit instrumentation side walls and the under nose plate. It's nice to see actually that the Sparrow weapons bays have got detail included so if you don't put the weapons in You've still got some detail that's evident there. Lovely uh, side walls provided in the kit. They shall look good once painted. And we've got this broken down vertical tail. In my opinion, probably too many pieces. Let's hope it all fits together quite well. I'm sure it will. Last 
bit of plastic in the kit and we have another set of vertical sorry horizontal stabilizers and these are the unslotted tack and then we have the leading edge of the fin the radome and some insert panels so there we go everybody that's Tamiya's new F4B Phantom 2 in 148 scale the kit looks absolutely fantastic on the sprues the level of surface detail is fantastic the detail in the air, around the airframe is good for me though it just looks as though the build could be over complicated with all these drop-in panels and subsections and modular approach granted Tamiya want to milk every version out of the tooling to save themselves money however will that be detrimental to the build Will it be over complicated and a bit of a nightmare well hopefully not it is a Tamiya kit so I reserve judgment until I've built it so until next time everybody please look after yourselves, take care and stay well.